So I've got this little IKO bearing linear motor. It's a moving magnet. So it's a stationary coil. And uh, we're going to tune it up. And we're going to try to get some incredible 50 millisecond moves, like 60 millimeter, 50 millisecond moves. Uh, we're going to use the uh, Copley Plus Drive, which has a 250 microsecond position loop update rate. And we're going to do some tuning, which is critical for fast move and settle. Um, you can see the IKO here in the picture. There's like an X and then a Y on this two axis stage, so a couple inches. Uh, this one's fighting gravity with a spring. That's kind of cool. And of course, I like the little Irish leaf there for clean lubrication. Um, so you can see the IKO comes in various formats for travel, distance travel. Um, but the basic principle is the coils are embedded in the motor. So this is stationary, the bottom. And the encoder is stationary. And it reads the encoder strip. It can be a 500 nanometer or a 100 nanometer. Today we have a 500 nanometer. Maybe tomorrow we'll try the 100 nanometer. But the magnets are located in the moving sled. And uh, we could measure the, a pair of magnets, and that would be the magnetic pair length. And I believe it's 30 millimeters. We'll check the motor data on that. Um, but as you can see, there's a really dense uh, field based on the gap. And we get pretty sinusoidal back EMF out of it. Um, although there seem to be some noisy spots. So I did a few things to reduce the static noise. Uh, so we got an NT55V25 5L. Um, so that would be the stroke length, thrust, mass, resolution. Um, so they're they're showing how to set up their drive, but I'm going to show how to set up a Copley. Uh, the specification for the inductance and resistance and magnetic pair length couldn't find in this sheet here. So there's, a, there's another spec, there's a catalog. Um, so that's probably where Dave got the information for this. But I'm going to go through the basic setup here and show you a few tricks uh, before we look at the tuning. Um, so it's a brushless linear. There are no halls. So we have to do incremental with wake and wiggle. Again, halls must be a very American thing. But a little wake and wiggle is okay. We can still phase it. It's just you're going to move a little bit. So, you know, just be aware of that. Uh, I like the encoder loss detection. So that's 500 nanometers or 0.5 micron. You can set up some times for controlled stop, but there's, I don't think there's any safety issues here. And we're just going to put it in a program position. We could be in a CAN mode or an EtherCAT mode. Um, we could follow an analog commanding position or an analog commands profile velocity. So various modes of operation. Uh, Multi-mode port, we can buffer it out or emulate it if it was a, like an absolute encoder. It's just an incremental. And um, we'll take a look at the motor specification here. We've got a little mass used to calculate the initial tuning parameters, although we did have to crank the gains up. Peak force, continuous force. I know there's a velocity of 1,300 millimeters a second, but I'm gonna double it theoretically because we got like a, it's almost 80 volt power supply here, um, eight volts per meter per second. So the theoretical speed is wicked fast. Um, you notice the resistance is high, so when I'm at one ohm, I mean one amp, 
with 66 ohms, I'm going to lose some voltage. So maybe more voltage is better uh, to hit uh, the limited speed probably is 1,300 based on the resistance and the back EMF, which is makes more sense with an 80 volt supply. Plus 22 millihenries, that's some significant inductance. So for the current loop tuning, I just tweaked a little bit. So double the gains till I get oscillations and cut them in half. Uh, should be about a kilohertz or more. Um, never have more bandwidth than you need. But we're trying to make a wicked fast move with a lot of velocity bandwidth. So I'm just going to leave it at 1.8 kilohertz. It was critically damped and it looked really nice. So just going to leave that alone. Um, maybe it's a little more bandwidth than, than we need, but I may need it to settle quicker, to move faster, because I'm trying to push the, the, velo the band velocity bandwidth out. Um, I also pick for maximum speed. I noticed a bump in my head into the back EMF because of the IR drop, trying to go fast. And I enabled the bus clamping, which got us away from center weighted and put us back to a, an older traditional um, zero to 100% modulation technique, which seemed to do a little better near zero and got rid of a little bit of noise. So it's subjective, didn't make a big difference. You know, I'm just, I'm just checking the box to get away from a little bit of static noise based on some ripple on the bus and hopefully that'll help me settle better but really didn't help me uh this gave me a little bit more speed so I'll, i think that's important and notice the resistance uh the peaking continuous current uh this will limit our speed too if we actually hit that kind of current in the velocity loop i moved that out to that's impossible but go ahead and get it out of our way um, I think the top speed said 1,300 millimeters per second, but that's based on IR drop plus back EMF. And uh, the integral was a little high, but the trick I used to get extremely high VP as compared to the, the default configuration was to move the V-loop pole from two pole 200 hertz to one pole 800 hertz. So I'm maximizing the velocity loop bandwidth. Uh, this is like a voice coil or a, a linear motor. We're, we're trying to maximize the throughput on this thing here. And um, that's a good way to do it. And in my position loop, I cranked up some PP and uh, set a tracking window to 50 counts, three milliseconds. The cycle for the res settling was like six milliseconds. So half of that, and I know I'm within the target. And I turn the feed forward trim down just so I can concentrate on move and settle. And uh, if I was scanning or something, I could crank this up, uh, 16384, but I'm allowing some following error to develop while I'm gonna make the move. So I got all the initial calculated values here, and then I did the tuning on the scope. Um, you can see we can do the current loop, the velocity loop, and then I just use the profile tab for position. Um, but with my velocity loop tuning, I just use some normal parameters, put it in the middle of travel and just had it bang, bang, back and forth. Um, anyways, we'll take a look at doing a profile move here. So here's the IKO. Um, start down here at this end, and we'll make a 60 millimeter move to the other end. There is a little rubber stopper at the end. That's cool, but I'm going to stop before I hit it. Um, I, I taped it down so it wouldn't move. There's some screw holes for attaching, but uh, I didn't want to drill holes in my desktop. And I put a little piece of rubber there to prevent it from making a bouncy sound. But uh, IKO MT55B25-5LM. And uh, BEL or BPL 
This is the ExcelNet Plus. Uh, it's a six amp peak three continuous model. Uh, I'd probably use an AEVA PV on this or with an easy board, but this is good for a demo. Um, just hooked it up to an 80 volt power supply. I uh, got the motor feedback connected to the incremental encoder input with respect to ground and plus five volts out to power it. And the motor output UVW with an earth ground. So normally you would connect the case of the drive to earth when you bolt it into the frame and the case of the motor when you bolt it on the frame to get a good earth ground. I didn't notice any uh, any problems with the feedback in, in this setup, so I'll leave that alone. Um, that, that's a good picture. Oh, and I'm talking to it with the um, SER-USB-RJ11 USB to serial adapter. And uh, we'll take a look at CME version 8.0. So profile tab, uh, 60,000 times 500 micrometers. I guess that's not 60 millimeters. That's half of that, so 30 millimeter move, which is like a pair of magnets for distance. Um, yeah, 30 millimeter electrical cycle. Anyways, uh, I've got a profile velocity with following error in blue. We'll see some actual current. I've monitored the bus voltage and the terminal voltage servo, and we'll see the in motion bit stop. Um, my, for my trajectory limits, I set it to 2000. Uh, with almost 80,000 millimeters per second squared. And this is a big number for jerk, 20 mega millimeters per second per second per second. Um, that just rounds the edges a little bit here. And let's take a look at the move. Okay. There's a move. And we can see the uh, profile velocity, rounded edges, hitting about 1,300. Um, this is my bus voltage, maybe it's 75 volts, and my terminal voltage servo is clipping a little bit while I'm applying current, which makes sense. I got about an amp with 66 ohms plus some back EMF. Um, the following air grows because of the clipping, but I'm just out of saturation, so actually the following error is due to the VFF term. Um, I've left it off a little bit from 16384 to allow some following error to develop so I could settle much nicer, much nicerly. Um, and you can see the entire move time is actually reduced down to probably about 44 uh, milliseconds. Uh, left click drag drop a rectangle and uh, we can see how the settling time settles in. I can look at the, the samples there. So this is at 125 microseconds in between samples. So two of those dots is a position loop update rate. And so it settles uh, rather nicely plus or minus a few counts here. Uh, I've got my window set at about 50 counts. So uh, I've settled and then I fired the output. Um, so that's uh, pretty good, pretty good uh, move times. And uh, thanks for looking at the IKO uh, uh, linear, linear motor.